Welcome to DMOP Garage. Look what we're on. We're back on the Krankenwagen yet again. This is a 52 barn door ambulance for those people that don't know. And look at that. Look at that nice view from out in there. Hey, look at that. Yeah, there's no upholstery yet. We're getting there. We're getting slowly, slowly, slowly. I'm just finishing off some stuff in here. We want to start getting all the kick panels and all that put on. I just had a little bit of wiring to do just a couple of these switches here which are going to be the lights and the sirens so we're just wiring those up and then we're going to button everything up under here we have our little panels that were made this is a little panel that runs underneath like so like that so yeah just finalizing a few little bits and pieces here is the headlining for the front cab here and we did find a little piece of factory material that was still up in here so we were able to work out it was actually this material that they used which is good so matt went and stitched up this sucker so he's got to come back down uh, so we can get this final part finished and of course once that's in this all gets glued around the corner and that means we can then get the windscreens in and then it also means we can get the seals because the, the material actually runs around here too. We can get the seals in here and then we can get the doors on and obviously get the door cards on, get the glass in. Uh, that'll be probably one of the final things that we have to do. Um, and then, of course, we've still got uh, the upholstery of these uh, stretchers. Now, I did order, some, I actually bought some belts, just some men's belts that are in that tan colored leather and that's the strapping we're going to use to tie down the stretches like the factory pictures that you saw in the last episode so it's get those bits are going to get there what i'm doing today i didn't want to go and buy a whole heap of new screws for screwing all this kick panel and i have all the original screws here you can see here and of course you know they're a bit knackered on the on the ends they just need a bit of a clean up. So I've, I've grabbed a few that we're gonna need and this is what I do. I know it's a bit of a tedious task, but I've got a few of them in here. Let me just take them over to the buffer here. I love this machine, it's freaking awesome. Now you can see, you can grab, I'm gonna try and do this one handed. You can see how bad that one there is, All right? And then let's see how we go here. that so that's the idea we're just going to polish the heads on all those screws i know it's a bit excessive but i am excessive <laughs> so we're going to get those suckers polished up and then we can get those installed and we can start drilling some holes this this part of the job's a little bit difficult because if you have a look in here you can see the original holes where they've gone and drilled them now it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be able to line those up perfectly. So generally what happens is you're making a hole just slightly next to them. So we make a mark and then just pre-drill a hole next to them all the way around. Obviously there's a few down the bottom here as well. I think there's about a total of 10 or 11 for this panel here. Now this panel here is also going to be holding the control box for the horns. So this has to be mounted and it's quite heavy. That's going to be mounted. It, it is actually on display. You do see it. Uh, it's not tucked away around the back. So what I had actually done is reinforced the back of that kick panel so that it's going to take the extra weight. So that's just one thing I did off the side. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll go and get all these suckers polished up. I'll bring you back in in a second. Okay. So I have just mounted the box and... I just gave those little screws there a bit of a polish up as well. They were pretty corroded. So that's all mounted and I've just got an extra bracing behind it there. Yeah, so that's all mounted, ready to go. And we'll go and install it into the bus. Okay guys, so here we go. This 
kick panel is complete that's all been screwed all the way around and our control box for the horns is mounted definitely a weird spot to mount it but that's that's where it was you can see i've just run the wires through some little holes and then of course now we've got the other kick panel we've got that little center section to go in as well i'm going to leave that side off just for now just in case i've got to do some mucking around with the wires so i'm going to leave it right like this now all the switches are all hooked up now so we're going to test those just make sure everything's working not sure about the second horn whether or not i need to have it by itself or whether i can have it together with the with the horn here that's going to be on the steering wheel so i don't know whether that's going to upset the the circuitry or not i don't think so but we'll give it a test run if it does then i'm going to add an extra horn to it which i've got another one that i can mount so anyway at least that's in it looks good that's the factory color and yeah came up awesome now a few people were asking about my sticker collection which is kind of <laughs> all over the place we have a few on the oven here you can see uh, there's all sorts of uh there's mark's one i've got samba we've got Butsy's Bits, we've got uh, Vita Performance here in Melbourne, Peninsula Diesel, Wolfgang International, we've got Buzzed Coffee, we've got, actually this is a really old, uh, an old sticker, uh, Mr. Bug, which was um, a Melbourne guy back in the 70s and 80s, I think, who was actually quite popular, and then we've got the ones down here on the box oh look there's all sorts of stuff down there dub works we've got auto craft we've got air cooled accessories and then we've got them all over here on the on the hoist as well you can see up here there's a few snowmobile videos there's AccuAir, air ride vanessa's pinstriping vein pinstriping there we've got timber sled that's more more snowmobile stuff and then, uh, oh look, they continue. We've got ones across here as well. There's a few HSV badges. This is our uh, Holden Special Vehicles, which is no longer actually. And our Holden badge as well. They're all gone, unfortunately. No more manufacturing. And a couple more here, some sled neck ones. Um, CSP. Yeah, a couple of little stickers here and there. There's even some ones over, over, over there on the sides. And we've got our little number plate collection behind the back of the beetle there i've been slowly just getting a few you know i've always had the bmx posters you know i've got an acrasa one up the back there too which is pretty cool and you know a few other ones here but we're going to do a revamp of the shed soon and the aussie flag up there of course all right we'll continue on here okay guys that's so the next day we've got issues again unfortunately what i did we fired up the the motor yesterday you can see something's missing here and it is the carburetor unfortunately we've got a bit of a gremlin that we haven't been able to work out i put the as you guys know i'll show you the carburetor here because it's back in pieces for about the fourth time today and i've got oven boy coming down to try and give us a hand but we've got issues with it i put a new gasket kit through it and we did change the uh the butterfly and we put a new shaft in it and everything is solid we've got no no air leaks the butterfly shuts perfectly and opens put a new needle and seat in it new gaskets cleaned it all out in the ultrasonic a few times and what it's doing starts motor starts perfectly and it runs perfectly but it's idling at about oh probably 13 1400 rpms and it doesn't matter what you do you cannot get that rev to drop now i tried uh, winding in the idle mixture screw and that did nothing it didn't it didn't conk the motor out it, and so i'm thinking okay it must be an air leak so we sanded the uh the bottom face here i've sanded the face on both sides just in case the the block was warped which it's not and we can't work it out because I actually put a post on uh on the sander and i think these 26s this doesn't seem to be a lot of people that know much about them and they're, they're very simple the only, only thing i did change was the needle and seat now the height of the needle and seat is specific so it's got to be between 2.5 and 3 mil and the way you measure it you actually put a straight edge across it and measure how much this protrudes up so that's in spec we've done that because i was thinking maybe it's getting too much fuel through the fuel bowl and potentially leaking down but 
No, I don't think so either. So I'm going to put it back together again and we're going to try again. But for the life of us, I can't work out. It just will not drop in idle. Now, a few people said, oh, it must be an air leak in your manifold. Remember, the carby came off it and it was running perfect. There was no, it's not going to magically have issues overnight. So it can only be something to do with the carby. Now, I don't know whether, I wouldn't think the butterfly would would. You know, if you, if you put new brass bushes in and get it solid, I don't think that would change anything. And I know if you put it up to the light, it's sealed. So it's not like air is getting past the butterfly. Uh, yeah, bit of a mystery, unfortunately. So anyway, we're going to try. I'm going to put it back together again for the, like, the sixth time. <laughs> and we'll see if we get a better outcome or not. See what happens. As you can see, uh, yeah, we've got some problems. It's backfiring. Um, the idle mixture screw does nothing. Like I just wound that all the way completely in. It's like it's getting air from somewhere, but <laughs> there's no leaks anywhere. Manifolds hasn't been tampered with and it was solid when we had it in before. So yeah, I don't know what the problem is. Um, like I said, the butterfly is shutting completely. Could be, it can't be pumped because again, fuel um, that was working before. Could be points because we did play around with the points. Uh, distributor, I've got that set pretty much on right on top dead center at the moment. But as you can see, it's just running at one RPM and that's it. You can't change it. So yeah, don't know what, don't know what the problem is. We'll have to find out. Wait for Oven Boy to get here. All right, we've got the Oven Boy in the house and he's doing some tuning. So that's the other screw, all the way in. And it hasn't done anything. So that's what the issue is. Right. So you can kick it off. So we have discovered the problem. I'm gonna show you guys up here. Two issues going now. Two issues. So this thing here, is the inside the carby is actually too um it's it's bottoming out before he can block it up sorry i'm talking to my youtube fans they can wait <laughs> this is owen well, voice speaking here i'm okay. talking to you okay here we go so what's the, doesn't what's matter. the, what's the other issue it's okay you can go now <laughs> Okay, so your new screw is bottoming out on the housing, right? The old screw is full of pits and it's warped slightly. Well, there's some issue with it. I think the warpage in the screw or the pitting in the screw is still causing bleed. So right. the options we have is to make th that slightly deep, which is a no-no, or to take a little bit off the point of that, but not as much as you took off the other screw, right? And to make it so it bottoms. Because I can use the other screw, we can stop the fuel completely, which is good. But as you turn it, it's picking up or if it's picking up pathways where it travels through. Right, So I don't okay. think it's concentric with the hole. Right, so... So I would say you can try and clean the other screw up and we can, before we try modifying that one. Right. Uh, just give it a polish on the outside, make yeah. it, yeah. and then yeah, see yeah, what yeah. happens. And okay. then if it works, we can do the same thing to that screw. Yep, and that'll be a better... One, or use the other one. Or, you know what, I, I might even have a couple more of these uh, in my stash, so... So oh. I spotted it with my great eyesight. <laughs> He's got great eyesight. And you didn't see it. There you oh go. God. So that's our issue. Uh, okay, well, let's fix this thing up and we'll get back to it. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought. Guys, well, as you can see, uh, we have no luck. We've spent probably the good part of a day 
going over that carby at least seven or eight times. We swapped out everything. I've got a feeling the needle and seat in, internally in the body of the carburetor is actually worn out too much and air is getting past it. There's just no other explanation. We've tried so many different variations. It will not idle back down again. So... I don't really understand because all I did was change the butterfly, the shaft. I put new brass bushes in and put a new shaft in, and that's all I changed. I didn't change jets. I didn't change anything else on the motor. And as you would have seen earlier, it was idling and running perfectly. So I don't really understand why, just by changing the butterfly, that it's just revving its guts out and won't come back down to idle the butterfly i've double checked it it's not leaking there's no air gaps in it it's a total mystery so yeah i'm not really sure what we, unless someone knows these carbies like i said it is a 26 vfis there's not a lot going on inside them i just think potentially that needle and seat we did have to grind down the tip of it but i think internally it's probably damaged and that's probably enough to upset it and not make it idle any better um poor oven boy spent all day and he couldn't get it to run any i mean it actually you can you get revs really good uh it's smooth but it just will not come down to idle now a few people have said oh it could be you know vacuum leaks we haven't changed any of this and as you would have seen before i touched that linkage it was running fine so i don't think it's anything to do with the rest of the motor it's something that's happened to the carby so yeah, I think we'll have to leave it for that on this episode, guys. And um, the back's a lot better. Uh, thanks for all the people that uh, that mentioned uh, how I'm going. So, yeah, she's she's a lot better. I've just got to take it easy. Uh, and, yeah, hopefully we'll get this thing sorted out soon in the next episode. And I'll give you some more updates. Cheers, guys. Yo.